Welcome to Master Math. Here's a couple of tips to help you get the most out of these lessons. First of all, they're free. So you can watch it as many times as you need to understand the concept. Secondly, if I cover something and it's confusing to you still, hit your back button and look at it again. And third, when we come to a you try it problem, hit your pause key, try the problem on paper and pencil, and then hit your forward key to move on to the answer. I hope you enjoy yourself. Today we're going to talk about some practical uses for the percentage equation and the percentage information that you've learned in the last couple of lessons. We're going to talk about discounts, which is a percentage reduction in the price of something. We're going to talk about markups, which is a percentage increase or a percentage added to the wholesale cost of something. And we're going to talk about simple interest or a percentage paid to the depositor for use of their money. And the amount of money deposited is called the principal. Discounts. You know what discounts are. It's a percentage reduction in the price of something. If you go to the grocery and apples are normally a dollar but today they're fifty percent off or half off you're only going to pay fifty cents per apple and we can figure that out using the percent equation hopefully you remember that the percent equation is a portion a equals the percentage p times the whole w and in a discount problem a equals the dollar amount of the discount P equals the percentage of the discount and W equals the original price. Let's look at a problem. Let's say the sweater was normally $50 but today it's discounted 25 percent. Well we could use the percent equation and solve that. A, the amount of discount, equals P, the percent discount, times W, the original amount. And 0.25 times 50 equals 1250. Now 1250 is the amount of discount. It's not what you'd pay, it's what you don't have to pay. What you have to pay is the original amount minus that discount, minus 1250 or 3750. So after the 15 or excuse me, after the 25% discount, that $50 sweater would cost you 3750. Now there's another and maybe faster way to do this. If you remember that you're getting a 25% discount, that means they're taking 25% off of the 100% or the original price. If you take 25% off of 100, it leaves 75%. So you're going to end up paying 75%, and we could calculate it this way. We could say that R, the new retail price, equals 75% or 0.75 times the original price of 50 and that equals 3750. Let's say the problem were turned around and it said that the sweater was normally fifty dollars but today I paid only 3750 for it. What discount did I receive? What percentage did they mark it down and sell it to me for 3750? Well let's use the percent equation. 3750 which is the portion equals the percent times the original price. And to get rid of that times 50, I've got to divide both sides by 50, which I've done here, and $37.50 divided by $50 equals the percentage, and that equals 0.75 or 75%. But 75% is what I ended up paying for it. It's not the discount. The discount is 25%. So to figure out the discount, I've got to take 100% minus 75% and I get 25%. Markups. You didn't really think that car dealer was selling you that car for the same price that he paid for it. He couldn't do that. He's got to make a profit or he'd go out of business. He's got to pay employees. He's got to pay taxes. He's got to pay rent on his building. He has to make a profit. And his profit is his markup. A markup is a percentage added to the wholesale cost of something. 
And again, we can use the percent equation to solve this problem. A portion, which is the markup, equals the percentage, which is the percentage markup, times W, the whole, which is, in this case, the wholesale cost, the original cost. Let's look at a problem. Carol's Cars pays the manufacturer $15,000 for a car and then marks it up 33.3% for sale to the public. Well, let's put those numbers in the percent equation. A portion, or the markup, equals the markup percent, 0.333, times the cost to Carol, 15000 and one-third times 15000 equals 5000 But again, 5000 isn't what you pay for the car. That's the markup added to the wholesale cost. So you're going to pay $20,000. Let's do this problem backwards. Carol's Cars pays the manufacturer $15,000 for a car, then sells them to the public for $20,000. What's her markup? Well, let's use the percent equation again. $5,000, which as you can see is the amount of the markup, it's the, 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 the price to the public minus her cost, which is $5,000, equals the percentage times $15,000. Now I need to divide both sides of the equation by $15,000 to get rid of it on the right. <clears throat> and I've also gotten rid of a bunch of zeros because they're going to cancel each other out. And I get 5 divided by 15 equals P, and that equals 0.333. Simple interest. You know, if you go to the bank and deposit money, the bank's going to pay you interest, and they're paying you that interest because they're going to use your money and try to make more money with it. So let's figure out some interest problems. Let's say your principal at the Bank of Bob was $1,000 today. B of B pays 5% interest. How much principal will you have in one year? Well, we can use the percent equation. And when we stick that into this problem, we get A, the dollar amount of interest you earn, equals the percentage interest, which is 5% or 0.05, times the principal amount, or $1,000. And 0.05 times $1,000 equals $50. And that 50 is just the interest you earned. You get to keep your $1,000, and you get to keep the $50 interest. So after a year, you got $1,050 in the bank. Well, let's look at a different problem. Same problem. But in this case, you deposit $1,000, B of B pays 5% interest, but you're going to keep it in there for five years. Not one year, but five years. How much interest would you earn? Well, we just figured out that that's 5% per year, and for one year, you earn $50. Wouldn't you expect that they'd also pay you $50 for the second year, and another 50 for the third year, and so forth? Well, they would. The amount of interest you earn would be 5% per year times 5 years times the principal amount, or $1,000. And when you multiply that all out, you get $250. And again, you get to keep the $250 plus your principal, the original deposit, and you'd have a total of $1,250 in your account. Try this one. Hit the pause button, do the problem, and then hit your forward key. Sammy Sofas bought a sofa from a manufacturer for $800, and I'll circle that, I'll see you CC. And then he marked it up 15% to sell it to the public. So I'm going to circle 15%. After six months, Hmm, should I circle that 6? Well, in this problem, you don't need to circle that 6 because none of these percentages are over a, per a period of time. Interest is over a period of time. You earn 5% interest per year. But a markup is just a straight increase in the price of something, and it's not relevant to time. 
And a discount's the same. You're going to discount it, but you're, it doesn't matter how long. It's just going to be discounted. So I'm not going to circle the six months. But after six months, it hadn't sold. So Sammy discounted the sofa by 10%. What was the new price of the sofa after he discounted it by 10%? Well, hopefully you see this is a two-part problem. First, we got to figure out the markup of 15% over $800, and then we've got to discount that marked up price. So let's do the first step. We use the percent equation, and the, the markup is going to be the markup percentage, 15% times the wholesale cost, or $800. And 0.15 times 800 is $120. And our new, whole, new retail price would be the wholesale price of $800 plus the markup, or $920. Now we could do that in a single step, because we're taking the $800 and we're adding 15% to it. We're taking what was 100% and we're adding 15 more percent. So we've got 115%, or as a decimal, 1.15. And if I multiply 1.15 times the wholesale cost of 800, I again get $920. So Sammy tried to sell the sofa for $920 for six months and it didn't sell. So he figured the price was too high and he better discount it by 10%. Well, again, we use the percent equation and we take 10% times the current price, which was $920, and that equals $92. But we're going to reduce the $920 by that discount of $92. And when we do that, we get $828. We could do that in one step, too. We could say that the new retail cost was 100% less 10% which is 90% or 0.9 times the, the previous retail cost of $920. And 0.9 times 920, again, equals $828. You deposit $500 into a savings account earning 4% interest. You leave the money in the account for six months. What is your principal balance when you withdraw the money after six months? Principal balance means how much money do you have in the account. Remember, principal means the amount you deposited, or it also means the amount of money that, that your account is worth at any particular time. So, let's use the percent equation. A equals P times W. A, a portion, equals the percent, and they're paying you 4% interest. So it's 0.04. But that's 4% interest per year. And you're leaving the money in the account for only six months. Six months is only a half a year. So they're only going to pay you half of that 4% interest. So it's 0.04 times one half times the whole amount, which was the $500 that you originally deposited. 0.04 times one half equals 0.02 or 2%. 2% times $500 equals $10. So after six months, you've got your principal, your original principal of $500, plus your $10 interest, or you've got a total of $510 in the account. Discounts, markups, and simple interest. You're going to use those concepts all your life. And now it's time to test your skill. Go to www.mastermath.info and download and print the worksheet Discounts, Markups, and Simple Interest and see how well you understand this stuff. Then go back to Master Math and take the quiz on Discounts, Markups, and Simple Interest. Well, I hope you learned a bunch and come back again real soon.